Hi, my name's Trev. Are you sure? Hi. Hi, my name's Trev and I'm the Geekologist. And welcome to the Geekology channel, the one and only channel that lets you, the reviewer, decide what you like. I'm only a small part in this and you play the major part. Don't forget that. Today, we're going to talk to you about Fuzzy Audio or Fossy Audio or Fussy Audio or something like that. And we have two boxes to show you. Very attractive, aren't they? Well, they are a bit plain and they have taken a bit of battering from China, but let's see whether they work. First of all, we're going to try the K5 Pro. We're going to try that one first because that's the most all-in-one packet of the two. So that one is sort of a DAC amp. Uh, we'll go into that in a minute. And this one here is an integrated amplifier, a speaker amp. It's very small though. We'll put this one to one side and we'll unbox this one. The Fossey Audio K5 Pro is around about $45, which is probably going to be around about £45, the contents inside. The K5 Pro user manual, a rather strange looking USB A to C cable, an optical cable, somebody else's cable, forget that one. And this is to do with the gaming element. So we have a microphone and an earphone splitter, and that goes into a 3.5 for gaming headphones. And here we have the article itself. Let's put that to one side. Bass and treble, you don't see that on many devices these days. And what have we got on the back? That's for your USB or power. I believe what you can do is you can plug that into a laptop which will power it and use it as a USB DAC. Or you can plug it into a power pack and it will be then able to use the optical or coaxial connections. Yeah, and then you've got your audio outs. As we give it a twirl, I think you'll agree that at first it looks rather plain, but there's something about that granite gray color and the volume knobs that seems to be a nice mixture of retro and new. The other interesting thing about this, what they call mini stereo gaming DAC, we won't be doing any gaming on it, so I'm not really much of a gamer, so that's for somebody else to do a review on, is the fact that it goes to 1000 milliwatts, i.e. one watt output at 16 ohms or 500 milliwatts at 32 ohms of input power which is a pretty steep and a pretty impressive output for something that retails as a USB DAC at $45. Folks what I'm now going to do is I'm going to leave you to it and do a bit of listening and come back to you. In reality that will take an hour but thanks to the magic of YouTube it will take about 30 seconds. There will be demos available for downloading in the YouTube description as always and I would encourage you to have a listen to those. You can download them in a lossless wave format and I'm going to be listening to this latest CD I got this week courtesy of Mojo magazine free and this is 
some tracks that provided the inspiration behind the Dark Side of the Moon album, which I don't know if all of you know is 50 years old this year in 2023. And I've been meaning to listen to it and what better excuse than to try out some new kit and give you a verdict. I'll be testing this against the AMI DDH1. Now, although this one is a lot larger, the output power of this at 16 ohms is 100 milliwatts. And remember I told you that the output power of this at 16 ohms was 1000 milliwatts. The AMI DDH1 is an analog as well as a digital amplifier. This retailed when it was first out at $549. So take the $49 off and that's this particular model and it would still cost 500 without this bit. If that makes sense, which I'm not even sure it does to me, but nevertheless, we're going to be using a retro CD Walkman. You'll be able to listen to the contents of one of those tracks in the YouTube description. I haven't decided which one yet. I'll have a listen through to the CD and see which one sounds the most up-to-date hi-fi wise and I'll do a recording of that. How does that sound? Well give me 30 seconds and I'll come back to you with um, an idea as to whether the $549 one trances this one to the point where this is unlistenable or Vicky Varky. Onwards and upwards, as they say. Starting from the Roland binaural in-ear mics, which were attached to the Olympus PCM5 recorder, which then had uh, a listening function for the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS with posh headphone cable, which was plugged into either the Fozzy Audio in optical mode, which was connected to a cheap power pack. And that was all that was needed to run it. Or alternatively was connected into the AMI Music DDH1 German DAC headphone amp, which was connected by a optical to mini optical cable, which was being fed into the source, which was the Sony CD Walkman, the DEJ815 model, which as you can see is in incredible condition for a late 1980s CD Walkman. And we played for you, Mary Lou Lloyd Fearless and it sounded absolutely incredible and was bang up to date in terms of fidelity. So having recorded that and having done my listening experience and having brought it to you and you having had hopefully the opportunity to have listened to it because you listened to it earlier and I told you that it was in my YouTube description as a free download. You've listened to both versions both clearly marked as which one was which. This one I recorded first off of the Fozzy Audio and this one I recorded second off of the DDH1. So was the Fozzy Audio at $45 up to being in the same comparison as a $549 uh, headphone DAC amp? 
the fuzzy audio against the AMI showed some evidence of glare so it was a little bit harsher a little bit less detailed and a little less smooth sounding than the DDH1 which was actually more than enough power to power the Edition XS full size planers as you can see we got up to a huge sort of 30% on the volume of the AMI and to achieve the same volume we got up to about 60% on the fuzzy audio but both were as loud as I would recommend anybody listens to headphones on and the reason why I listen to the headphones quite loud when I record it is so as you can get the proper reproduction with nothing taken out but at the edge of it being into distortion and obviously once one goes into distortion then you can't hear the notes and the music as it was intended to be heard at the sound quality that I want to provide you with. So the fuzzy audio was slightly less good sound quality than the DDH1 from AMI Music. The AMI Music is now seven years old and this one is seven days old. The fuzzy audio to me for the money just sounds incredibly good. It wasn't that much worse than the DDH1 and many of you may say well actually I prefer the more exciting sound of the fuzzy to the more laid-back sound of the DDH1 and that my friends is your prerogative if that is what you feel because that's what this is all about it's not just about my opinion it's about yours once I've provided you with the material through which to listen then you can decide yourself what you prefer and why. The differences between the Fozzy and the AMI DDH1. The DDH1 is an amplifier that will take a analog input, so you can put analog components into it. It will also output digital as well as input digital, and it will also do analog line output. The Fozzy Audio uh, needs no mains and the AMI does need mains. The Fozzy Audio only needs a USB to power it and provided you plug it into a laptop or PC or MacBook then that is all you will need to do. It will do um, power and uh, DAC facilities. On paper it says it is a lot more powerful, uh, twice as powerful, or in fact, yeah, twice as powerful as the AMI DDH1. In reality, well, I'm not so sure, to be quite honest with you. But let it be said that both of them were perfectly able to power of the addition excess to a volume that was if it had been much more would have been uncomfortable let's put it that way this is not something I'd be using for a smartphone even if you found a weird and wonderful way to uh, get the 5 volt um, split um, so as it would perhaps one bit would be going into a power pack and the other bit would be going into a smartphone I think a DAC dongle would be far better for a smartphone than using something like this but if you don't need your smartphone running as a DAC and you've got things like CD Walkmans or laptops and you don't want to spend a fortune and you want plenty of power that would run full-size headphones then for $45 I think it's a no-brainer but what do you think and that my dear friends is the big question that we can only ponder until I get your comments, your subscriptions, and your likes. And I look forward to all three. Until the next time, I will be seeing you. This is the Geekology Channel.
signing off. <laughs>